Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE, General Test, the 10th edition. I'm at page number 136, and the problem that I'm about to solve is number 13. Quantitative comparison, quantitative comparison, hence the QC, number 13, as opposed to multiple choice questions. There are two types of questions that they give you in the, in the GRE for the math. One, the first kinds are the standard multiple choice questions that everybody is familiar with, and then they have this animal where you're supposed to compare the two quantities. Number 13, let's take a look at it. It is important that you have the book in front of you so that you read the problem with me. Uh, if you do not own this book, if you do not own it, purchase one immediately. You need it in order to, in order to practice, in order, in order to get ready for the GRE. It has seven real exams. Anyway, enough of the talk. It says, number 13, it says, working at a constant rate, working at constant rates, Machine R completes, machine R completely presses S records in half an hour. All right. So I have machine R that is going to do X in half an hour. And then we have machine S that completely presses X records in three quarter of an hour. Machine S is X records in a quarter of an hour. There are there are two ways. Perhaps I should leave the room for the for the traditional way here. I'm gonna I'm gonna raise this again. So here's my R. X in half an hour, and here is my S, which is X in three quarter of an hour. And then here, there are there are two ways you can solve this problem. This is an algebraic problem, and therefore there are two ways of solving this problem. One is what I call the traditional way, the orthodox way, the conventional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the proper way, if you like, the way your math teacher would expect you to solve this problem, the way. The people who gave you the example is expected to solve this problem with through the algebra, and the other one is what I call the quick and dirty way, the non-conventional way. If you're very good at algebra, if you know how to solve it with the algebra, if you're very good at it and you can do it in a timely manner and do it properly, kudos for you. Go for it. Not everybody is very good at algebra, so for those people, another alternative would be to plug in numbers here, make up numbers. So let's, let me show you how to do it here. So I'm just going to make up numbers. I'm just going to say, let's pretend that it does 10 in half an hour. What is the question actually asking in column A? This is our column A, this is our column B. The number of records completely pressed by R in three hours. So I need three hours, all right. So, it, so I'm pretending that X is 10. So in other words, it will do 20 in one hour. And therefore, in three hours, it will do three times as many. In three hours, it will do 60. So that's that. Let's continue here. Here we're looking for the number of records completely pressed in, pressed by S in four hours. All right, very good. Ah, I just realized, see this is what happens when, you, when you're plugging in numbers, you do not know how the numbers that you plug in are going to work out in the problem. They evolve with the problems. And as they evolve through the problems, sometimes the numbers that you start out with are great, they are fine, everything is hunky-dory. I believe that's the expression, hunky-dory. Uh, or sometimes you find out that, uh, that uh, the numbers that you, that you plugged in is very awkward. It doesn't work very well. For example, here, I just realized that it will be difficult if it's doing 10 in 3 quarter of an hour. That's very awkward. I need something that's a nice multiple of 3 because you see it's three quarters. If I have some nice multiple of three, then I can figure out very quickly how much it does in a quarter of an hour. So I'm gonna go back and change my numbers. Now, had this, been, had, had this been a real exam, of course here I will do it in different colors. Uh, just, just change the numbers, it might make some multiple of 30. I'm, instead of 10, I'm gonna plug in 30 for X. 
my x is my new value of x is 30. So it does 30 in three quarter of an hour. Well, if it three quarters, if it does 30, 10, 20, 30 in three quarters, then in one quarter it must do 10. 10 in one quarter. And they are asking us how, how many it will do in four hours. Well, how many quarters are there in four hours? In one hour there are four quarters, so in four hours there must be 16 quarters. So I multiply both of, both of this quantity by 16 and that will tell me how many it will do in four hours. It will do 160 in four hours if x is 30. Now I have to go back and fix this, problem, this work here. That's why I use a different color here. So I'm going to redo the work based on the value of x being 30. So here we go. My x is now 30. Because 10 does not work. 10 is not working out. I changed the value of 10. 10, 10 was working out fine here, but it wasn't working out here. So 30 in, in half an hour. And therefore it will do 60 in one hour. And therefore it will do 60 times 3. in one hour and then it will do 100 it, so we are pretending that x is 30 if x is 30 if it does x in half an hour 30 in half an hour therefore it does 60 in one hour I need to find for three hours so multiply both sides by three here so three times 60 is 180 180 in three hours, here we have 160. So I'm again, I'm going to change the color one more time so you can, you can see the difference. So here in column one, I have 180 in three hours, which is what they were looking for in column A. And here we have 160 in four hours. Therefore, since 180 is bigger than 160, therefore the answer is A. This is a plug-in method. It requires a little bit of practice. And if the numbers do not work out, you have two options. One option is to sit there and cry. Other option is to just stay held with it and start with the new numbers. See, I started with 10. 10 was working out fine. I was happy. And then when I got to here, I got stuck. Because 3 quarters, let's just, multi let's just plug in some multiple of 3. So I did 30. 30 in 3 quarters, therefore 10 in 1 quarters. There are 16 quarters in 4 hours, therefore 160 in 4 hours. Voila, that's it. And then you go back and fix your work that you finished there. This is the plugging in method. Just to the conventional, the, the algebraic method, the classical method. I'm going at a bit of a leisurely pace. Let me check in the back, see how, see how much time I have left. It's eight minutes into it, so I have, I'm going to have to wrap it up very quickly. So we have. x in half an hour, therefore it will be 2x in one hour, and therefore times 3, times 3, is it 3? Yes. So times 3, two, 3 times 2 is 6x in 3 hours. That's our machine R. Now let's do the machine, now let's do the other machine. And you will see that the other machine, the machine S, is, is going to be less. Machine S is X in three quarter of an hour. Therefore, it will do 2X in one and a half hours. And therefore, it will do 4X in three hours. And then it will do if I add two more x's, it will do six x's in, see, it takes x in three quarter of an hour, therefore it will do two x in one and a half hours. If I go from four x to six x, this should be four and a half hours. But we do not have four and a half hours. This, this machine only has four hours. It will do, uh, it will do six x in four and a half hours, but it only has four hours. In four hours, of course, it will do fewer than six. It will do fewer than six. And this is 6, and therefore the answer is A.
So here I'm not figuring it out how many how many uh, records it can do in four hours. I'm asking myself how long it will do to do how long it will take machine S to do uh, six x six x records. It will take four and a half hours. It doesn't have four and a half hours. It only has four hours. So it will do fewer than six x. That's it. That's it. I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to communicate with me regarding a personal private tutoring or anything at all regarding GRE, go to my website at www.prep.prep.com and send me an email. Alright, thank you.